presence of the Lord here in this service. God, we thank you, God, for who you are. You are still the resurrection and you are still life. And Father, we come before you this morning, God, asking God that you would fill this place with your presence, your power, and your glory. God, let your anointing be upon each and every one here today. Every song we sing, every word that we say, God, let us bring glory and praise to you. God, we understand this morning it's not about us. It's all about you today. And God, I pray as we enter into worship, God, let us enter in with our hearts and our minds fixed on you. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, let's worship the Lord this morning. Pastor, if during worship service I have no issues with this mic, then we know it's not the mic. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> Amen. Good to see everybody out this morning. We are here to praise His name. Amen. Now, some folks might be here for other reasons, but I'd like to think that we're here because we want to honor God and praise Him and worship. Amen. This opening song, in fact, is Hallelujah. I love to praise His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise His name. did a wonderful job this morning talking about his name and how it's used and we need to do we need to praise his name a lot more than sometimes we use it in other ways that are not pleasing to him amen 
This next song is Because of Who You Are. Let's worship church just because of who he is. Because it tells me God is everything I need. 
Amen. The Word of God says we are complete in Him. He brings completeness to our lives, and He is truly everything that we need today. And we're going to go to Him in prayer this morning. If you have a need, slip up your hand toward heaven. Let Him know you recognize, I need you, God. I need you to help me with this situation that I'm going through today. I need you to be my healer. I need you to be my provider. I need you to be my emotional saver. Amen. Whatever it is, God is your answer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are still King of all kings and Lord of all lords. And God, we know there's not a problem, a sickness, or anything, God, that we go through that you're not sufficient. And God, you said in your word, knock and it shall be open. Ask and we shall receive. And Father, we stand here this morning knocking and asking for your help. Understand it in ourselves, we are not capable. But God, you said with your help, we can do all things through you, God, that strengthens us. And Father, I pray this morning, God, for every hand, God, that was raised here in this building. God, I pray for everyone that's watching this morning, everyone that's in the hospital this morning, God, that you would just reach down your great mighty hand and touch them right where they're at because God you know exactly what they need and when they need it and God we know this morning you're never early you're never late but God you are always right on time and Father we thank you in advance for the prayers that are going to be answered here today Father we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus and everyone said today Amen let's sing it this again and worship Him today. Yes, Lord, I worship You because of who You are. One more time. And Lord, I worship You because of who You are. Lord, I worship You because of who For behold, I am the Lord thy God, and I am with thee this day, my children. Trust in me and know that I am thy way maker, thy provider. I am all that you need this day. Look not to the left hand or to the right hand, but look unto me, saith the Lord, for surely I am with thee this day, my children. Trust me and know that I am the living God, and I am with thee every step of the way. Trust me and believe, and I will do great and mighty things in the midst of thee this day, my people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship thee. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, of the Lord this morning, church. Oh, God, you're worthy. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you today. 
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing one more song this morning before the speaker comes. Matthew 28. There's some familiar scripture at the end of that. I'm sure you've probably heard it before. It's known as the Great Commission where Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. That's, what, that's the command that Jesus left for us, is to go out and make disciples of all nations. How do we do that? We do that because we've got to see people the way, the way God sees them. We've got to love people the way God loves them. And this song says, Jesus be Jesus in me. Make it your prayer this morning that, that Jesus shines through in everything that you do. your prayer and your desire because how many knows it's not about us it's all about him amen you may be seated this morning i'm asking travis he's going to come this morning he's going to share can we give him and the lord a hand clap today uh, is this thing on Are we good you guys hear me so cool all right. Hello, my name is Travis Freeland. I, can, can I ask you to stand one more time? I want to, uh, to pray one more time and, um, and just kind of give God the glory here. Father God, we just come before you today. Creator of the heavens and the universe, you are worthy. You alone are worthy to be praised and adored. We come before you this morning, Father, and we just pray, Father, I just ask that you would just touch my tongue this morning as I share... Your word, as I share what's going on with Matrix Life Care, I, I pray that uh, everything that I say would be what needs to be heard in this, this church, Father. That uh, everyone can understand what's going on with the mission, Father, but also, Father, that, that they would walk away with something that will stir them to strive and seek you out more, Father. We give you the glory and give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, Amen. Jesus, Jesus is, Lord. is Lord. Jesus is King. Do you know this one? God is good. All the time. 
And all the time. Amen. All right. I wanted to have a little fun with you first off because this is kind of today is what we're going to be talking about can be a little heavy topic. And uh, as I did make your poor pastor cry a little bit uh, when we talked. And so um, it's, it, you know, it, it, it may get very emotional today. So I, I want to kind of keep some lighthearted piece in that as well. Thank you guys for letting me come. Thank you, Chris, for, for, for allowing me to share. Um, I know this man over here, Dan Van Huser. He, he, he's probably, oh man, is he really going to do it? So uh, I, uh, there was a season I worked at Purdue University, and, um, and when I worked there, Dan Van Huser, obviously I don't know how you're familiar with him, but he works in risk management, and in a lot of my jobs, a lot of things, I was always pushing the limit on what was safe, and he was always pulling me back and protecting me from getting somebody hurt. So thank you, Dan, for all those years of service to help me keep myself from getting in trouble. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so, yes, thank you guys for having me. Um, I, I'm going to do two things this morning. I'm going to share um, a little bit about my testimony. I think it's really cool. You know, we read in the Bible all kinds of cool Bible stories and how God moved in different people's lives. And I'd really like to, if you give me a few moments to share a little bit about how God has changed me, I want to share that first. And then um, from there, really kind of share what's going on with Matrix Life Care. Um, how many of you... By a raise of hands, how many of you have heard of Matrix Life Care outside of the announcements that you guys have been? Okay, most, okay, a handful, okay? Unfortunately, Matrix Life Care is one of the best kept secrets in this town. And so that's, I feel like, part of why God has brought me on to help make sure more people understand what our mission is about and what our goal is. For those who don't know, Matrix Life Care is a women's uh, pregnancy resource center. And so um, we are the pro life movement in this town. Um, to really help women, embolden women, give women the courage to look them in the eyes and say, you can be a great mom, we believe in you, and helping people choose life. And because that's, our, we value life, we believe that Jesus died on the cross for life, and we believe that every womb has a life in them, and that life should come forth and, uh, and, and, and give God the glory. And we should give every child that right to give God the glory with whatever mission God has called that person and individual to be. And so, uh, with that said, I, I will share a little bit about who I am um, real quickly. Uh, so, Travis Freeland is my name. I'm the, one of the directors at Matrix Life Care. Uh, my wife, Tabitha, is here with me, and I have six children. Um, and uh, one of them is up here, my 12-year-old, my oldest is here, and the rest of them are back um, giving your, teach school, your Sunday school teachers and the children's church teachers chaos this morning, giving them, giving them to work. So, no, my, my, I, I, I hope my kids are doing okay back there and not embarrassing me. We'll find out. But, but anyways, no. Uh, so, yeah, and so I've been blessed with six. Um, I think our roughest year in our marriage was when we had a four-year-old, a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a one-year-old. That was a rough year. They're really tight, those top four. The days are long, but the years are short, is what they say. So I'm experiencing the long days right now. But anyway, so no, it's good. I'm grateful for the journey that God's given me. Um, with that said, uh, just to kind of share a quick story again, uh, I've been in the Lafayette area for about 20 plus years now. I uh, came to Purdue as a student and never left. And so um, pretty much got hired on at Purdue and went through a series of different jobs there. Um, in all of those journeys of being working at Purdue, um, one of the things that happened to me about six years ago, um, I was at a spot, you know, God can use all kinds of things in our life to get a hold of us and kind of change us. And sometimes we always hear the tragedy stories of the person who had to go to the very bottom, the divorce or the, or the, or the car wreck or some serious major accident in their life that really kind of uh, brought them to their end where they started seeking God out. Um, and, and, and for me, it, it, was, it wasn't that side of the, of, the, of the spectrum that God decided to use to help try to change me. He did something else. Um, he used a thing called American Ninja Warrior. Has anyone ever heard of American Ninja Warrior? Anybody heard of that? Okay. For those who don't know, it's a television show. It's an athletic competition. And the idea of American Ninja Warrior is, is that um, each contestant on that show... Um, goes through a series of obstacles. It's an obstacle course, and each obstacle um, requires either some balance, either some arm strength, hand strength, grip strength, jumping, dynamic movements, um, and if you slip or fall, you fall in the water. Um, not to be confused with the goofy show called Wipeout. That's a total different show, all right? Wipeout is goofy and, and humorous and entertaining. Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior is supposed to be a little bit more serious, a little bit more competitive and... and, and 
Yeah, not near, no, yeah, and, 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 and a lot of the athletes that you see on there are phenomenal individuals. A lot of them who compete on that show that you watch, if you've ever watched it. And if you're not, it's okay, because it, the essence of it was, was when I was 38, I'm, I'm 44 now, and uh, when I was 38, um, I was kind of, I guess, going through that midlife crisis thing, where I was thinking, I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I said, you know, I need to change some things, I need to do some things differently, and, and I, I made the decision, and said, you know what? I've always watched that show, American Ninja Warrior. I could get on that show. And so I made the mistake of posting on Facebook to all my friends, I'm going to get on American Ninja Warrior by age 40. That was my goal. And so, um, and then, of course, because I made the mistake of letting everyone know, I knew people were going to start calling me up and reaching out. Hey, how's that workout going? How are you getting ready? You know, how? And so, so I said, oh, boy, what did I do to myself? So anyway, so I end up starting to work out. And um, because at that time there were five children, we had four, we just had a newborn, we had four uh, of our kids and then our newborn, there'd be five. So um, it was a busy time in my life. So the only time I could really kind of uh, uh, work out was, was at 3 a.m. in the morning. That was the only time I could find. And so um, I knew I needed to have my faithful workouts in if I was ever, ever going to actually be able to compete on the show. And so... And, and here's, a rule, here's, a, here's the one nugget for somebody out there. Someone needs to hear this. Whatever you do first thing in the morning always gets done. All right? There's your little piece of, piece of advice. Whatever you do first thing in the morning always happens. That's why I put my workouts at the beginning of the day because I always knew that that would happen. If I put them at the end of the day, I might be tired, I might be exhausted, kid crisis, family things, something would stop me from doing what I wanted to do, what, what I made my priority to do. So I made my priority to always get that workout in at a crazy hour of the morning, 3 a.m. So anyways, and so uh, I, I, I run, I, I, I do all these workouts, and, uh, and where, where, what time is it right now? I want to know, I, I guess I missed some time, where is it at? Okay, all right, I just want to make sure I have enough time on this. Okay, so anyway, so, so anyways, I, I, I'm working out, being faithful. I go through the motions of applying for the show. Um, they, they, you have to fill out an application, um, right, put, a, put a video together. If you're curious about um, my application video and watch it, don't Google it now, but you can Google my name up and see these application videos out there and see. And so I actually had two years I applied for the show. But anyways, I go through the motions, not expecting to get an invite to the show. And so I get, I remember on a Good Friday, it was a, right before Easter, on a Good Friday, I get the phone call from the company, the producer, saying, hey, we want you to be on the show. We want you to be on American Ninja Warrior. And we're going to film in Indianapolis, which was the first year they'd filmed in Indianapolis um, ever since the creation of the show. So I'm really kind of excited, really pumped. And, um, and we get the, the kids down there, because Indianapolis made it really well. And it, you know, this is kind of a cool thing, because... They only do six cities with American Ninja Warrior. They only do six cities, and they um, only invite 100 contestants per city. So there's only 600 of us that get to compete on the show. And that year, I was told that there were 76,000 applicants. And so the fact that I even got an opportunity to be invited was a kind of an honor. Anyways, to make up the quick story version, because I could drag this out for a long time, the quick story is, as we get down there, I show up, and um, I show up, and they tell us our pecking order. So the, what they do is they start filming when the sun goes down all the way till the sun rises. So you could, find, you, could be, you could be competing at 9 p.m. or you could be competing at 4 a.m. And so here I was preparing myself for who knows what time in the middle of the night I was going to be competing. So I show up and I report in and they say, Oh, Travis, welcome. Here's your pecking order. I was the very first contestant of the night. I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? The first contestant. And if you, if you understand what that means, it means is I didn't get a chance to watch anyone else try the obstacles to learn from them because they change the obstacles all the time. So I'm thinking, so I'm thinking oh, are you kidding me? And so, anyways, so we're getting ready. I'm standing up there, and they're going to say to me, one, two, three, go, action. And so the course was, I was really concerned. They had some guys practicing on the course, and they were slipping and sliding in because it was kind of raining. It was kind of a, like a slight drizzle. I don't know if you've ever had those days where it's just kind of, it just like spits at, at you. It's not really a true rain, but it just spits. And just, they were drying the course out and trying to get it ready. So here I am. I'm getting ready. They tell me, three, two, one, action, thunderstrike, torrential downpour. And so they shut down production. My poor wife has, has the kids 
and, and, uh, and she's been waiting for two hours, like 10.30 at night. We, she was there by 8.30. There's torrential downpour. She says, well, I'm done. I'm getting these kids to the hotel. I don't know what's going to happen. And so we, we kinda, they were going to wait out the storm, so my wife put the kids down. I'm uh, waiting in some kind of hotel for a year, and I'm kind of going through my mind. Do I stay warmed up? Do I cool down? I don't know. This is crazy. What's going to happen? And then, um, and, and then the storm blew through. It was about 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, and uh, they apparently were getting ready to start making production happen again. And so Tabitha, my wife, is just finally got all the children down, settled down, calmed down, got them asleep in the hotel room. When the phone call rings for her to say, hey, we're about to start production up again. Can you drag your kids back out here? And so my poor wife, after having them all asleep, um, she's the real hero in this story, by the way, my wife. So uh, she's literally trying to get them out of bed. She's got one, but she's literally grabbing by the shoulders and shaking and won't wake up. She's so dead and dead to the world. And so anyway, so with all that said, the, um, they, they get them out there. I'm getting ready. And the next thing I know is I'm, I'm standing there. They give me the countdown. My kids are off, but they're kind of, you know, drowsy and not half, half awake. And uh, the very first obstacle that I had to do was a, um, these little 60-degree platforms. We had to jump to one, grab a hold of it, and then jump to the next platform, grab a hold of it, jump to the next one, go back and forth until you hit a rope to swing. And that was the first obstacle. And I thought, I can get this one. If I can get this one, I, the third obstacle was the one I was nervous about. So I'm getting ready, and I'm, and I'm jumping from one. I, I jump to the first platform. I'm doing great. I jump to the second platform. I'm doing awesome. Jump to the third platform, and my left hand just did not grab. And the next thing I know, I'm in the water. <laughs> and time goes really slow in those kind of situations. I don't know why, but it does. And so I'm under the water, and I'm... You know, all the different thoughts that could be going through my mind, the only thing that came to my head was, wow, this water's not as cold as I expected it to be. <laughs> and so I was like, are you, you know, and so I came out of the water, I look at my poor children, and they're crying, and they're, and they're, and, and they're like, Dad, really? This is what you got me up for? <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, so... So, you know, I had like 25 friends that we invited down, and they all watched me, and they were supporting me. And I felt kind of bummed because I kind of disappointed everybody. And, but, you know, the fact was, you know, if don't go out looking for my footage on, on out there. You won't find it. You, if for Ninja Warrior to film you and put you in their show, you either have to do phenomenally well or have a phena- phenomenal blunder. And I gave them neither. So it's all right. And so, but with all that said, with all that adventure and, and, and high ac- excitement to the disappointment, all of that experience wasn't really what, um, what it was about. And I didn't know it at the time. And I didn't realize until afterwards that I reflect to see what was happening. Because what I didn't tell you was, when all that was happening, something else was going on in my life. Even though I was focusing on my physical uh, getting, getting in shape. You know, I went from like, I was 210. I weighed 210 at the time, and I leaned down to about 175 to get to that, that spot. So I was, I was in fairly good shape after being a couch potato for 10 years of my life. And so I focused on my physical piece, but what I wasn't really understanding what was going on until afterwards was God had used that tool to do something spiritually to me. Because what was happening was, one of the very first times I got up at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, you're groggy and you're trying to wake up, I grab this pre-energy workout solution. And so you take your little powder and you put it in your water, you mix it up and you drink it, and it throws a bunch of caffeine into your system and a bunch of other drugs that I have no clue what I consumed, but it's supposed to maximize your workouts. And as a 38-year-old, dang it, I needed every extra piece of, you know, angle I can get an advantage at that point, right? I'm not a 20-year-old 20, 20, 20 anymore. But anyways, so, but I read the instructions, and the instructions say, wait between 30 to 45 minutes for maximum results before working out. And so I've got downtime. I've got 30 to 45 minutes of downtime, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just kind of, it's quiet, kids are asleep, what could I be doing? And the thought came to my mind, well, maybe I should read my Bible. Um, you know, and so I started reading my Bible 30 to 45 minutes at a time. And so what was happening was, because I was reading such large chunks of the Bible at the time, I was getting through the scriptures. I got through, started Genesis, read through Gen- uh, Revelations, 
in about three months. And so I'm continuing to work out. So I start again. I read through it again. And what I'm discovering, because I'm reading so much and so fast, my hunger for the Word of God increased. I began to really begin to see how God orchestrated everything in scriptures and how everything points to Jesus, how every little detail, every little minute little thing in scripture points to Christ. It's such a miraculous book. It really is. Is there anyone who's taken the time to read through scripture and understand how God has orchestrated it cannot come out of there not recognizing it. I don't understand how any any anybody cannot see it. It's right there. It's right in front of your face. And so so I was just so inspired with that. What happened was, after the Ninja Warrior adventure, I continued to work out because I wanted to try to come back the next year and do better. And I continued the workouts, but my workouts began to start leaning off because what I was doing was I was actually increasing my time in the Word of God. So I went from 30 to 45 minutes to an hour, to an hour and a half, to two hours, to three, three hours, some, you know, three, to, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., just soaking in the Word of God. And, I, I, and for five years now, I have just let God just change my life. And I, and I just, I am a different person today. I mean, he's, I mean, the Word of God will do it. The Word of God will change your life. And, 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 and you know, we live in a, in, a, in, a, in a world right now that's very biblically illiterate. I mean, we're probably, it's, it's, it's ironic. We have more access Right? We have more access to translations of the scripture, to commentary, recorded commentary, um, and, and, and books written by men of old and men of, of different generations. We have all these collections. We've never been given more access to the word of God, yet we're in a generation that has hardly any clue of what's in the Bible. Um, so, I, and, and, you know, and so you know, my personal challenge to all of you today is... is, is Shut down Netflix. Shut down your social media. Go do a social media fast. Do an entertainment fast. You don't have to do a food fast. Just do a fast from, the, uh, from all the, the technology things. And take that time and read scripture. Let God change your heart. Stir you up. If you're having a hard time hearing from God, clearly, it's probably because you're not spending enough time in the Word of God. It just, you, just, you need to soak it in. You get it. He can set you free from so many things just by simply work, working in the Word of God. You know, uh, I, had a, I, had a, I struggled a lot with pornography when I was going through all this. And God, through getting in the scripture, helped me set me free. And I know there's someone in this room that needs to hear that because I've been told the statistics are in our churches today, 70% of, of men are struggling with pornography and 30% of the women are. So it would not surprise me that some of the people in this room who are hearing my voice need to hear the encouragement that you can do it. God can set you free. You can be set free. Start digging into word, the word of God Seek him out. Seek him with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, and he can set you free. It may take some time. And any time you mess up, get into the Word. Any time you're feeling down, get into the Word. I don't care if you've just sinned, get into the Word. Make the Satan so mad that every time you sin and mess up and he wants to beat you up, that you get into the Word. God can change. God can move you. So there you go. There's your, there's your sermon for the day. Okay. So anyway, so but God's doing some cool things. And so God is doing some cool things. And, and, so, and that's my personal testimony of what God's doing. And, um, and with that, one more piece of the puzzle, and then we'll get to talk about Matrix here, is for whatever reason, because, I, you know, I mean, James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Um, you know, and we are in the last days, and they said that they will be spoken to by dreams and visions. Um, I received my first dream from God in January 9, 2020, right before COVID hit. I, I, hardly, I never hardly dreamed and remembered my dreams, and I got a really clear dream from God and um, a commission of some sort. I'm not exactly sure all the details yet, and I don't have a lot of time to tell about that one today, but um, it was the first time God started really speaking to me through dreams, and he's been giving me direction since then and kind of leading me through things. And... Um, that was the first one. I've had a few more. But then I got another one on May 23rd of this year. And uh, if you're not already, here would be my advice to you guys, is as you're seeking God out, make sure you're journaling. Make sure you get a notebook with you. Every day when you're reading scripture, whatever, whatever God speaks to you, write something down, whether it's just one scripture, whatever. And then when God starts speaking to you more, when he starts showing you dreams, start writing them down immediately as soon as you get up. So that way you have them, because you'll forget them if you don't. 
You'll forget them if you don't. And, and then see how God takes care of you through that. And so I know someone else needs to hear that. Start journaling. Start journaling. Start journaling. I'm telling you that because I had to hear it a hundred times before I started journaling. So I'm telling you, someone in this room needs to know they need to start journaling um, uh, their, their time with the God. And so stay faithful and start journaling. With that said, um, on May 23rd of this year, um, and I guess to preface that, um, I have Matrix Life Care. I have been a board member for the last six years. And so God actually, that's even a miracle in that self, how I got connected with Matrix Life Care, because just like many of you, I hadn't even heard of it. I didn't even know what they were. And so when I went in the first time to check them out, it's was like, oh, you guys are the pro-life initiative around here. I, I like this. This is something I get behind. And so um, I, 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 I was able to come on, become part of the board, and, um, and been working with uh, Melissa McAtee, who is the CEO of, of uh, Matrix Life Care. She's been working there for um, about, they brought her on 11 years, so she's been on there beyond, before I even showed up. Um, she started Matrix when they, not, she didn't establish it, it was already established, but when she came on board, she was the one full-time staff member, and she had two part-time staff members. Um, now God, 11 years later, has, 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 we were up to 14 st- full-time staff. 14 full-time staff. And so, um, so God has really blessed the ministry. And uh, there's also some other cool stories about that, and we'll have time, I might share them. But anyway, so here I am. I get this dream on May 23rd of this year. And uh, I, I get this dream, and the, the, basically this, the essence of it was, was that I was going to be working for Matrix Life Care, that Melissa McAtee, the CEO, was going to be super excited that I was going to be on the team, assuring me that I would be really good at it. And uh, that I was going to be a sales position. And I thought, really, God, a sales position? I don't want to do a sales position. So I put that, sh- I put that dream up on the shelf. I didn't really worry about it. Ah, you know, it just maybe what I ate last night, pizza or something, you know. So, the, uh, so anyways, about two weeks later, some different things shift around with my job and things, and I'm, I'm contemplating maybe looking at a different career move. And then my wife reminds me, hey, uh, you had that dream with Melissa and Matrix. Why don't you reach out and find out what's going on there? And say. So I reluctantly called her up and uh, was just kind of putting a feeler out there. You know, it's kind of weird when you're trying to ask someone for a job. And, uh, and said, hey, you know, what do you think about me maybe becoming part of the team at Matrix? You know, is there, you think there might be room for me on the team and everything? And she stops me mid-sentence and says, Travis, I had a dream you're going to be working for us. Okay, all right, God, you got my attention. All right, you know, okay, I'm beginning to see something going on here. And so, um, and so after we talked about it, we both got really excited about it, I went ahead and uh, broke the news to my team that I would be leaving uh, Purdue and uh, broke the, uh, told them I had my two weeks notice in. And, I, it was, it was, and even at this, two different individuals confirmed another dream that they had about me leaving Purdue of my coworkers. And so I said, okay, God, I know. This is what you've called me to do. So I am here before you today as, for lack of a better word, the Midian of of Matrix Life Care. Um, There's an altar of bell we need to knock out in this city, and and I need your help to do it. We need to produce an army. And so um, I am here to call upon all the warriors out there, all the pro-life warriors, to help me help this community and help actually bigger than just Lafayette. I, we're we're going to take out, we're going we're to save the whole state. state of Indiana is going to be taken care of. We're going to be a sanctuary city of, for life um, in this city, and then we're going to make the state a sanctuary state for life. Um, I might not be able to take care of the whole country, but by golly, we're going to try to take care of this state and this city. Um, with that said, I will share some more about Matrix Life Care. Matrix Life Care... Um, we are a firm believer that if you, if, you, if you take the mother and encourage her and bring her hope and bring her courage, she will choose life. Um, we are big on ultrasounds. One of the things we will do is if, there's a, um, uh, is, is if we have the opportunity to give the ultrasound, we will open up the womb to let that woman see what's going on inside of her. So we give out ultrasounds a lot. Because we know that if the mother sees the child inside of them. If the mother sees the child inside of them, it's no longer a clump of cells. It's a son or it's a daughter. And that is a game changer for so many of them. Um, Between that and our counseling, 
we, will, we see a success rate of about 93% of the women who come through our doors. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, this year, um, there's been 100, uh, we've saved 147 uh, babies from death. 147 have been saved. Since January this year. And so God is, God is on the move. God is changing people's hearts, changing people's minds. Um, and so the ultrasound and the counseling that we do, because we, many of them, you know, they come from all kinds of walks of life. Uh, some of them have already have children, and they find out they're pregnant with another one, and they, can, they, can, they can't go beyond the mindset of, how can I afford one more child? Or maybe the husband that was supposedly all supportive is no longer in the picture, and now they're pregnant again, and they don't know how they're going to take care of it. We do have this, you know, we, we get them all. The rape cases, we get the, we get the, the abusive cases, we get uh, the first-time uh, pregnant girls through our doors, too. We get them all. They're all there. And every single one of them, just they need that hope. They need that encouragement. And a lot of times we will sit down with them and have that counseling session with them to get a feel for where they're at, see how abortion-minded they are. Some of them will say, oh, I'll never, never uh, kill my baby. Um, and we'll still give them an ultrasound because we know that they may not think that way, but as soon as they go home and they announce that they're, they're pregnant to other people, all of a sudden they have other people in their life say, well, you couldn't be a good mother, or you can't do that. And so... Um, or you need to get rid of that. That's going to be a problem in this family. There's embarrassers or whatever else. You know, there's all kinds of arguments that, that, that they have to fight against. So being able to let women and remind women that there's a little daughter or a little son in them makes all the difference in the world. So we give out ultrasound as often as we can and as freely as we can. Um, all of our services at Matrix Light Care are free um, because we know that that, is, that that can be a hindrance for someone coming through our doors is if, they, if, they have, if there's a cost involved, it may stop them from coming through our doors. So we don't want, we want to remove those hindrances. Hence why, if there's several services are free, the money's got to come from somewhere. That's why I'm here today to help share with you the mission so you guys can help us. But um, with that said, I, I, would, I do really want to share some really cool pieces of the puzzle. God is really, I don't know why. It's just like, this year has been the year that God is saying, we're going to do something in Lafayette about, about the life, pro-life movement. I don't know why. I don't, I, I, the fact that he brought me on the team, the fact that we've, that we've got other things that we've got going on. So to help you understand what, 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 what else to understand. So there is... Um, how many of you have heard of the 40 Days for Life? 40 Days of Life. Have anyone ever heard of 40 Days for Life? Okay. So... How about the movie Unplanned? Anyone watch the movie Unplanned? Anybody watch the movie Unplanned? One or two people? Okay. 2019, a movie came out called Unplanned. It's a really powerful movie. I encourage you, challenge you to, to, to go find it and, and watch it. Um, it gives you an understanding of, of the two types of abortions that happen. Um, and it's a, it's a drama, but it's based off a true story. So it's a, it's a very engaging, very well done movie. And so, um, Matrix Life Care is intentionally two buildings down from Planned Parenthood. Uh, we've, uh, we're, we're at 938 Mezzanine Drive, so we're right on here on the east side, um, near the Walmart on the east side there, near 65, so 938 Mezzanine Drive. We are two buildings away from Planned Parenthood. Last year, Planned Parenthood um, had... According to the statistics and the reports, there were 194 abortions done at that clinic. 194. And so, um, 193 of them were chemical abortions and one was a surgical. We're not for sure how they pulled off the surgical because they don't have anyone licensed to do surgical abortions right now. As we know, as our knowledge is, we don't, we are, we, they do not have a, a, a certified um, surgeon to be able to, to remove babies from the womb. Uh, which is a good thing. Um, um, but for now, what they can do is they can give out the chemical abortions. The chemical abortions are simply two pills. Um, the first pill that they give, give the woman um, uh, starves the nutrients to the child. And 48 hours later, the baby will be uh, no longer living in the womb. Then they're, given, they're, told to take, they're instructed to take a second pill. And the second pill is the pill that will push the child from the womb. And so it's basically like having labor 
um, excruciating amount of pain that the women will experience when they, when they do this. And so it's a very sad thing. So, um, and I will say, because this is a heavy topic, that if there's anyone in here that's ever had the experience of this yourself, I'm sorry. We love you and we want to support you. We're not here to condemn anybody. We're here to support you. And God can forgive you. We can forgive you. So if there's anyone here that's around here that... that I just want to let you know we love you and we support you. And we want you to heal and... Um, and, and help you get through these things. So uh, we do part of. We also do provide a lot of grief counseling as well at at um, Matrix Life Care. So I I share those things because it's intense. But I want you to understand that that it's an evil thing that's going on at Planned Parenthood. The, the, what they're doing, what they're giving women, what they're encouraging women to do. Um, many times they're encouraging them to do these abortions basically alone in their homes because they're ashamed of what's going on. Um, so they're trying to hide it. And so many times they'll experience that whole abortion by themselves uh, without any support. So I say all that because I don't like what Planned Parenthood does. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. And, it, and, I, and, and, and I was frustrated because I thought, God, how can we stop this? How can we... How can we, how can we, we, we obviously... The laws of the land could be changed, which would be great. And in December, we're going to find out if some of the laws get changed. But it may or may not happen. You know, we don't. It's, and that's and that. But the fact is, we can still make impact. We can still do change. And how we can do that is through, like I said, this movie Unplanned kind of gives us a demonstration of it. But also, what 40 Days for Life does. 40 Days for Life is the system of praying twice a year for 40 days in front of a Planned Parenthood. They stand out on the sidewalks, and they, they don't protest. They don't yell at people. They don't make a big scene. They just simply sit there and pray. They try to have engaging conversations with, with the women before they go through those doors. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. But, um, but they, for 40 days, they'll pray. And um, this started down in Texas over a decade ago. They, started down, they did this in Texas. And when they were doing this in Texas... They, um, they did it in front of this abortion clinic um, at Planned Parenthood, and Abby Johnson, who was a former director of a Planned Parenthood, was the woman who was in that, uh, that Planned Parenthood where this 40 Days for Life were praying every day. And, it, and through the power of prayer, it changed this woman's heart. She witnessed an abortion, and it broke her heart. And she turned from being part of the uh, Planned Parenthood program to coming over to the pro-life movement. And so she has now, been the, for the last decade or so, been encouraging other women and men to come out of the Planned Parenthood world and come join the fight for life. And so um, with that said, there was a, there's a significant piece that she came and shared with us about what goes on in Planned Parenthood and the statistics that we know about. One of those is, is that any day that... Um, people are out praying in front of Planned Parenthood, their no-show rates increase. Sometimes up to 75% no-show rates. If we could do that in our community, if we could stand out there as an army of people that just love women, want to support them and discourage them from going through those doors. Because all we have to do is simply look at them and say, you don't have to make this decision today. You come back tomorrow. Tell you what, why don't you come down to Matrix Life Care? They'll give you a free ultrasound. They'll help you out. They'll give you all your options. Because we know if we can get them through our doors, 93% of them will choose life. So there's a strategy being, uh, being done. There's a, there, there, we're coming together with a strategy. And so... Um, 40 Days for Life is one initiative. We do another thing at Matrix. We actually have a training for what's called Sidewalk Advocates for Life. Same concept, but instead of doing it for a 40-day campaign, we have people there every day of the year that we can. And so our goal is to fill those sidewalks whenever Planned Parenthood is open with individuals who love women and who want to support them and encourage them. Um, and so um, we're, we're looking to continue to grow that army of people and volunteers 
um, to be willing to take our training. We have a, it's about a 10 hour training that you take to give you the conversations and the way to navigate and have a conversation. And, um, and I'll tell you the one other piece of the puzzle that's really cool about all this is we want to capture them before they go through those doors, but we know we don't always. Sometimes they come out. And when they come out, you know, sometimes they have tears coming down their eyes. Sometimes they're, you know, uh, they could be stoic, but sometimes they... Because we know that many of them will come out having have taken the first pill. And uh, we now, in the last year, have been qualified to be able to administer what's called the abortion reversal pill. This is really cool stuff. We now have the way to reverse the effects of the first pill. And so, when a woman... Yes. So when a woman comes through the doors... When the woman comes, through, comes out of those doors, we can look at them and say, it's still not too late. Go down to Matrix. We can take it, let you know about your options. It's still not too late. And I'll tell a quick story about that, um, and then we're going to have to transition here. So um, the, we, we had our very first one on July 4th of all days. It was kind of a wild story. We had a woman who had taken the pill. We don't exactly, I can't remember what location they took it at, but as soon as they, she took the first pill, she recognized what she had done was, was a mistake. And she wanted to change in her situation. So she did some Googling and found that we had the ability to administer the abortion reversal pill. So um, they reached out to us, got a hold of one of our on call individuals. They set up an ultrasound on the 4th of July weekend, on their Saturday, on her day off, came in and the ultrasound technician was able to check to see if the baby still had a heartbeat. Now, um, to help you understand the situation, the idea, remember, with the first abortion pill, 48 hours and the baby's supposed to be dead. This baby was at 52 hours when we gave the ultrasound. The baby still had a heartbeat. So we were able to then give her instructions, the young woman the instructions on, you need to take these pills every day for the next seven days, because basically they're progesterone, progesterone, uh, progesterone, that pressed Thank you. I can't get it out today. Ah, my lips. All right. But anyways, it's it's the hormone that helps a baby do be a baby and and and, and feed and right and, and so we give you give them higher doses of that to help reverse the effects of what the first pill did. And so anyways, she had to faithfully do this for seven days, and uh, we told her we'd come back in and we'll check on you, see how you're doing, how the baby's doing. I can assure you there was a lot of prayer happening that week for that situation. And we, we covered that with a lot of prayer and uh, checked in on her seven days later. The mama was doing good and the baby was doing good. So, and the cool piece is, is on February 14th is when that baby is scheduled to come into this world. And so on Valentine's Day, we are gifted with another child, all thanks to the God's glory and his ways of doing things. So I'm kind of sharing you a little bit of the battle plan of kind of how we're doing things. And, uh, but I really want to kind of give you a feel for what goes on inside Matrix. We, we have a video we put together. It's about eight minutes long. I'd like you to watch it. It kind of, sh it kind of follows the story of one mother who came through our doors and um, how we were able to love and support her and encourage her to, to choose life. And so if you guys want to go ahead and run that, and, uh, and I'll be right back up after the end of the video there.
sobs, I explained how my family turned on me. I didn't know how to explain this to my children. I know I could place the baby for adoption, but how would I explain to my daughters the changes they would see in my body? Amy looked at me as she told me this wasn't my fault. None of it was my fault. She told me she was there for me. She figured out I was about five weeks along and explained how much the baby inside of me had already grown. I didn't realize it was so developed. The baby's foundations for its brain, spinal cord, and nervous systems were already laid. The heart was already beating, and its lungs were beginning to form. She continued to patiently explain all my options. As soon as she told me the truth about abortion and what the procedure entailed, I knew I could never do that. This baby was already formed. It had a heartbeat. It had a soul. I thought abortion might have been the solution to make everything better, but after hearing that, I wasn't so sure anymore. And then she asked me, could you handle the impact of another traumatic experience? I hadn't thought of it that way. The weight that I would carry for the rest of my life. How could I live with having an abortion? It would break me. I couldn't handle anymore. I didn't want to be condemned to hell. I didn't want to face Judgment Day. I looked at her, right in her eyes. We both knew that I couldn't. With a sigh and tears rolling down my face, I told her I knew I had to choose life for my baby, even if that life wasn't with me. Through the next several weeks, Amy and I met regularly as she helped me process and heal from all that had happened to me. It was a lot harder than I expected. There was a lot of frustration, tears, and pain. And then I found myself at my lowest point. I couldn't do this anymore. I wrote a letter to my daughters telling them how much I loved them and how sorry I was. I started to think about how I should do it. The thought of taking my own life consumed me and overwhelmed me all at the same time. I needed help. I couldn't go through with this. My girls needed me. My baby needed me. I went to the hospital for my 20-week ultrasound. In that dark room, the screen flickered as the nurse rubbed the gel around in my stomach. I saw the head, the legs, and the arms. And then she told me, it was a boy. I've always wanted a boy. I love my three girls, but ugh, a sweet baby boy. I texted Amy and I told her right away, I wanted to keep this baby. I wanted to parent this baby. I loved him already more than I could ever explain. A few weeks later, I had an appointment to meet with Amy. She showed me a scene from a popular medical show with a young woman who was sexually assaulted. I watched women line the halls of the hospital in support of this patient. They didn't know why they were there, other than the patient needed them. She needed their support. We finished our appointment talking through healing after surviving a traumatic experience. I explained to her that coming here to Matrix was my form of self-care. We got up to leave and as Amy opened the door, she stepped out and turned around and looked at me. I saw someone standing there and as I took another step, I saw women lined up all the way down the hall. I couldn't control the tears that started to run down my face. She did this for me. I locked eyes with each and every woman standing down that hall. Their support was tangible. Their love was tangible. I felt loved and accepted and without shame for the first time in a long time. The weeks went on and as I grew bigger and bigger, my sweet boy growing inside of me grew bigger and bigger. Among all the hardship, all the drama surrounding my rape, the betrayal of my own family, he was the light I needed to keep going. You all helped me, my healing, my baby's life, he wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here.
without your generosity and love. We, um, Matrix Life Care is all about giving these women hope. And so, as we're kind of coming to a point, you've seen, I've kind of tried to share a little bit the strategy of how we can shut down as many abortions as we possibly can in this community. We can do it together as a community. Um, but, you know, uh, part of my job was to make sure you guys were aware of all that we were doing and um, how we need your help. Um, there's two ways that you could help us today. One is through our baby bottle campaign. And so we like to do these at every church that will allow us to. And um, the baby bottles, now if you try to put milk in this thing, it will not work. It will just, it's got a slot in it, so it will just pour right out and make a mess of your table, okay? It's a, it's a piggy bank, okay? So please don't try to treat it like a baby bottle. I mean a real baby bottle, okay? But it's in the shape of a baby bottle, okay? And so the idea here is, is, is um, that you would, um, you know, basically put as much coins as you can, put this around your, um, maybe on a kitchen table, somewhere that you could remind you about Matrix over the next few weeks, and use this as a, as a prayer template, a prayer reminder to pray for all the women who come through our doors, pray for hearts being changed that try to go through the doors of, of Planned Parenthood, that, that we can fight this fight together. Your prayers are coveted. We need your prayers. It is part of the mission. We are not just doing a physical battle here. We are doing a spiritual battle. And uh, so we need your prayer. So, um, but, you know, as James said, your faith without works is worthless. So you can help us, not just say when the person comes up that says, I'm poor and needy, to say, good God be with you, you know. Well, you, we, need, we need your finances too. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So the, um, there's a fun way you can do that is you can engage your kids because this is a coin collecting thing. So you can put some coins in there, pray over it, collect it up. And I can tell you, if you max this thing out, with pennies, nickels, dimes, and if you do the silver stuff, you'll get more bang for your buck, but, you know, we'll take anything you'll give us. The, uh, you'll maximize this thing at about between 40 to $60 if you just put uh, your coins, nickels in here. And the reason I say that is that I would like to challenge each home to think about and pray about if you could step up and take care of one woman for us. That would be my challenge to you today. It's at least one. Um, and basically that comes out to $240. $240 will take care of one woman who comes through our doors um, between the marketing, between the ultrasounds, and the emer- what we call emergent care. Um, it's on average. There, obviously, there's, sometimes it takes a lot more hours, sometimes not as much. But, uh, so I would I encourage you to challenge you to see. And so there's two ways to do that. Obviously, you can just give us $240. Um, either through a baby bottle, throw your check in, cash in this, and bring it back to the church. Um, you're, you're, to, you're to hang on to this for about three weeks, and then on December the 12th, we're going to have you bring these back to the church, and then Chris will make sure they get back to Matrix Life Care. The other way you could help us is we have a different way of doing the 240. Maybe 240 one, at one time is too much for you. Another way to think about it is 20 bucks a month. And so we actually have monthly partnership pieces that we like to do. And if you do this, we can get you signed up for our newsletter and keep you updated on all the things that are going on in the lives that are being changed. But um, um, So yeah, you can fill out one of these. They're at the back table and fill it out. And it's got, it'll let you put all your information on. With the baby bottles as well, um, there is an actual, in the pink slip at the bottom is a number. That number represents which of the bottles you checked out. And if you could sign up at the back to let us know that you took which bottle. That'll help us hunt you down later if you don't return it. The, uh, the, uh, but uh, all kidding aside, though, is if you take the time and write down all your mailing address for us, we'll make sure to try to get you included in future mailings of newsletters and updates of what's going on. If you just put down your name, well, at least the pastor will be know who he can hunt down and find out who doesn't have a bottle, who has their bottle still. No, but cool. All right, that, that's, that's all I came to share. Chris, if you want to come up and... And we'll just kind of wrap this up. But I, I just thank you guys for, sh- for uh, letting me share. And I, I hope you're inspired to help us save lives. And so we can do this together. Amen. Amen.
Can we stand? I'm going to ask you and your wife, if you'll stand down there. Can we just stretch our hands and pray over them? They're on the front lines. And they come today asking for our support and our help. But would you just stretch your hands this way and pray over them today? Travis and Tabitha are going to be in the lobby. If you please stop by, take a baby bottle, sign it out. Or if you want to sign up for the monthly giving, we encourage that. But also on your way out, there's a basket there. If you'd like to give today at one time, you can make the check out to Lafayette Pentecost Church of God. And then we're going to give them one check at the end. But let's bow our heads to be dismissed as they head back there. Thank you for your time. and. Uh, for your attention today continue to lift up matrix life i had the privilege to go there and see the facility it was i mean it's top notch it, it, it's truly a blessing from god so let's pray father we are thankful for this ministry god that you've placed into our city and father i pray this morning to every heart that's here this morning god open our hearts and god help us lord to be willing to be supportive to this ministry God bless every gift bless every giver but God most of all help us Lord to remember to lift this ministry up in prayer father I ask it all in the name of Jesus amen God bless you remember service tonight please stop by let him know you appreciate him taking time or grab a baby bottle whatever you can do to help is greatly appreciated Jesus, I...